All right, so we are still in section 3b, our last part of it here. I'm now going to ask you to draw some graphs based on information that I give you about the first and second derivatives, but I'm not going to give you an actual formula for the function, so you'll have to rely just on the clues that we get from the first and second derivative tests. In our first problem, we're supposed to draw the graph of a function that satisfies all of these conditions. So the domain is all real numbers, and the function has no zeros, so it doesn't cross the x-axis. All right, take a look at the next three bullet points, C, D, and E. They're all about the first derivative. So this is really my first derivative test right here. I'm going to make my little information like I always do. And I'm going to say that the critical values would be 0 and 5. f prime of 0 is 0, and f prime of 5 is 0. Next, I know that f prime is positive on the interval from negative infinity to 0. And f prime is negative on both of the other intervals. So my graph is increasing, decreasing, and decreasing, telling me I have a maximum at x equals 0. And I don't have either a max or a min at 5, but I will have a horizontal tangent line because notice that the slope is 0. So this maximum comes with a horizontal tangent line, and then I also just have a horizontal tangent line at x equal 5. So there's all the information I can get out of that first derivative test. The next three things are all about the second derivative. So this is my second derivative test. Once again, I'm going to set it up just like I usually do. Looks like 2 and 5 are our critical values. Second derivative is 0 on both of those. This is my second derivative. This is my first. I didn't label them. All right. Second derivative is positive from 2 to 5, and it's negative from negative infinity to 2, and also from 5 to infinity. So I do have a change in concavity from down to up to concave down again, meaning those are both inflection points. An inflection point at x equal 2, and another inflection point at x equal 5. All right, so that's all the information I'm going to get this time, and I've got to try and draw a graph that agrees with all of that. I am going to notice that on the left side, I'm coming from a negative infinity, right? I'm going, I'd be going down to the left, and I have to go down to the right. So if I'm never going to cross the x-axis, I probably better stay below the x-axis all the time. Otherwise, I'll have a problem at the ends. So we'll do that, and I'm going to start out increasing until I get to the maximum at x equals 0. So that part's not too bad, just increasing and concave down. And when I get to x equals 0, wherever I happen to be, I'm going to make that a max. All right, I'll now begin to decrease, but notice that until I get to 2, I'm still concave down. So wherever I happen to reach, I have a new specific y values to hit, I'll stay concave down until I get there. But then at 2, I'm going to change to concave up. All right. The last thing I have to worry about is the 5. And a couple of things happen there. I have a horizontal tangent line, but no max min. And then I'm going to change to concave down. It's an inflection point. So as I head over to x equal 5, I'm going to come in 
on the horizontal, as though, almost as though I were going to have a minimum, but I'm not. Instead, I'm going to continue to decrease, but change to concave down. So I got my two inflection points in here. Notice this inflection point is at an angle. There's no horizontal tangent here. This one, there is that horizontal tangent that I was supposed to draw. Now, your graph might look slightly different than mine. For example, you may have different y values for your maximum or your inflection points, but the basic shape, the maximum and the two inflection points, needs to look like this. All right, let's try one more like that. So our domain here, negative infinity to infinity, and this time they tell me there are three zeros for this function. At negative three, at one, and at six. So I can plot those right away. All right, some first derivative test information right here. It looks like we have several uh, critical values. Negative 3, negative 1, and 4. And at negative 3, the first derivative is undefined. It's 0 at the other 2. So I'm going to keep that one in mind because that's probably going to be a vertical tangent line. All right, first derivative is negative. From negative infinity to three, from negative three to negative one, and from four to infinity, it's positive only between negative one and four. So I've got decrease, decrease, increase, decrease. So let's see what we've got here. At negative 3, didn't turn out to be a max or a min, but I do have a vertical tangent line. At negative 1, it looks like a minimum. With the horizontal tangent line. And at 4, it looks like a maximum also with a horizontal tangent line. All right, so there's all the stuff for my first derivative test. Let's try the second derivative test. Looks like we have two critical values, negative three and one. undefined at negative 3 and 0 at 1. Again, the distinction there is not nearly as important as it is with the first derivative. My second derivative is negative from negative infinity to negative 3 and from 1 to infinity. Positive from negative 3 to 1. So we have concave down, concave up, concave down. We do get a change in concavity at both of those points, so they're both inflection points. At x equals negative 3, we have an inflection point, and at x equals 1, we have an inflection point. All right, um, one thing that helps this time is we have at least a few points to anchor our graph, which does help a bit. So let's see what we can draw. I need to start decreasing and concave down. And as I head to this point at negative 3, there's a couple things happening here, right? I have to come in on a vertical tangent line, and it will become an inflection point. So decreasing and concave down. And as I come into negative 3, I want to make it look vertical. All right, at negative 3, no max or min. Instead, I'm just going to change to concave up. And the next interesting thing that I'm heading for is this minimum. 
at x equal negative 1. So a little vertical here and then come towards a minimum at x equal negative 1. All right, what's the next interesting point? Looks like an inflection point at x equal 1. This was a min, so I'm going to have to come back up again towards when x is 1 back at a 0. Stays concave up until I get there, and then changes to concave down after that. Okay. Notice I did try to make it look different. This one had the vertical tangent line. This one's kind of coming through at an angle, right? There's no vertical tangent at x equal 1. All right, the last interesting thing that has to happen here is at x equals 4, I need a maximum. So I'm just going to kind of keep going up and concave down until wherever I get at 4, there's my maximum. And then I'll finish by decreasing, staying concave down, and i got to go through that 0 at 6. So my function needs to look like that. All right, that brings us finally to the end of 3B.